begin by understanding the nature of a visionary experience. And uh, in the diagram you'll, you'll see here, I make a distinction between normal consciousness and vision consciousness. Vision consciousness takes the visionary outside the bounds of normal consciousness. It's not separate from it. It's, it's as though normal consciousness is immersed in a far deeper area of consciousness. Uh, take, for example, I don't know where you're sitting right now, but uh, the room in which you are is filled with pictures and, and voices and music and sounds. And you can't see or hear any of them unless you happen to have a television set there tuned in. Then you can see the deeper reality that's around you. Uh, this is the way it is with visionary experience. Uh, a vision takes the visionary out of the range of normal consciousness. It, ex it expands their consciousness into a far deeper area. And this is what happened to John in his vision. Um, now, in the, the slide you're seeing now, you can take time to read that. Uh, the subject, the visionary, is involved even more intimately in all of this, that is in the vision itself. She sees according to the modes of knowledge and symbolism available to her. That is, the visionary receives the vision in the context of their own worldview, their imagination, and the images that, that shape that worldview. Uh, the visionary becomes essentially a sharer in the information of the image and what is revealed. Such visions are never simply photographs of what is beyond the senses, but also contain within themselves the possibilities and the limitations of the perceiving subject. The images thus produced are, as it were, a synthesis of the impulse coming from on high, coming from God, and the possibilities at the disposal of the perceiving subject. John, for instance, is operating within his own uh, visual and imaginary and understanding framework. This is why the imaginative language of these visions is symbolic. So John is told to convey his vision to these seven churches, and that's a problem. How, how do you explain a visionary experience to people that haven't had the experience? How do you try to blow their consciences, consciousnesses out to the range of, uh, of visionary consciousness? Well, John employs a Jewish pool of images that shapes his imagination and understanding as well as that of his readers. This is, this is what's available to John to try to convey the vision. And so he uses the Jewish pool of images from the Old Testament, the intertestamental period, to try to convey something of the reality of what he experienced. Uh, that's why you see in, in Revelation, John is using again and again words like like and as. I heard something like this. I saw some, what I saw was as this. Because even though the imagery he uses to try to describe his vision is known to his readers, part of their image pool, John is indicating that even this image does not adequately convey the profound reality of what he experienced. So if you look at this picture, the picture of a Time magazine way back in, I think, 1992, this uh, Republican elephant stomping the Democratic donkey under its foot. This was the election where the Republicans took control of Congress, both houses of Congress. And of course, no one in America needs an explanation of this, this cover. It's part of our image pool. We're, we're, we grow up knowing that the, that the elephant represents the Republicans, the donkey represents the Democrats. And so when people saw that in Time magazine, they knew exactly what was being conveyed. It was talking about the Republican takeover of, of both houses of Congress. Now here's another image for you to look at, this, this flag. Does that speak to you in any way at all? Well, probably not. This is the flag of North Korea. Very few people are acquainted with the flag of North Korea. But what about this one, the American flag? Immediately, all sorts of resonance emerges out of our being when we see that flag as Americans because it's part of our image pool. It's a significant part of our image pool. So this is, this is what John is doing. He's using an image pool that for his readers was very significant, very meaningful, uh, very crucial in their understanding of their life and of their faith. Now we don't understand John's images and so that's why you get all sorts of weird interpretations of Revelation because these images are susceptible to be being understood in a different context in, in which they had their meaning. If we take John's images out of their original context of meaning, we can make them say anything we want them to say. And that's exactly what has happened. So you can go into any Christian bookstore and find a whole rack of interpretations of Revelation, each one differing from the other. 
Because if we don't go back to the original context of John's imagery, we cannot understand what it is he's trying to convey. If we try to read into that imagery our own ideas, it's just not going to work. So John, what he sees, the essence of his vision, he sees two orders of being in which humanity can live. The first, as in this illustration, is New Jerusalem. The foundation of that reality is heaven, God's realm. God, of course, is the ruler of that realm. The Lamb, Jesus, is the incarnation of God's presence into human history. And New Jerusalem are the people who follow the Lamb, the believers. The other reality he sees is the rebellious order. And you can see in this picture, you can diagram it in the same way, but the foundation of the rebellious order is death and Hades. Satan, of course, is the ruler of that realm. The beast and false prophet are the incarnation of Satan's rebellion in human history. And fallen Babylon are those people who worship the beast and its image, receive its mark, etc. So John sees that, that there are two worlds colliding in human history, New Jerusalem and fallen Babylon. So, in essence, what John's vision is, is a call to radical discipleship as faithful citizens of God's New Jerusalem in the midst of a fallen Babylon world. John sees the final victory, yes, but Revelation is not about end times. It's about what it means to be a Christian in a world like we live in today. We live in a fallen Babylon world. The worldview of our culture, the value systems of our culture, the behavior patterns of our culture are not those of the kingdom. We live in a fallen Babylon world, and we are to live in that world as faithful citizens of God's New Jerusalem. May you do so.